Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, first I would like to thank Admiral Ravi for the excellent organization of the Gold Dialogue and the warm hospitality we have experienced so far. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, referring back to the joke Admiral Krause made, it actually went differently. The German and the Dutch who were uh, taken prison by the pirates were all to be caned and they all had two wishes. And the German asked for his last meal of sauerkraut and he wanted the pillow which was lying around there to be put on his back. And then the Dutch turned up and he said, well, double the amount of strokes for the German and tie the German on my back. <laughs> <laughs> That's all possible in the relations we have since so many years. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor and a privilege to speak at such a prestigious conference as the Gold Dialogue. It feels familiar to be in the company of nations with a shared belief in safe and secure seas. Nations who are aware of the power and the benefits of free trade and open economies. Nations who don't take these achievements for granted and know that these achievements require a lot of hard work to maintain. Some of this hard work is making an effort of cooperation. Cooperation, ladies and gentlemen, is what we as navies are good at. For centuries, combined navies keep maritime routes open and maritime infrastructures accessible. The combined approach to counter piracy in the Indian Ocean is a good example of naval and even maritime cooperation. But let me start by telling you a fairy tale about cooperation. In the story of the Bremen town musicians by the brothers Grimm, a donkey, a dog, a cat, and the rooster all past their prime years in life and usefulness on their respective farms were soon to be discarded or mistreated by their masters. One by one they leave their homes and set out together. They decided to go to Bremen, no for its freedom, to live without owners and to become musicians there. On the way to Bremen they see a lighted cottage. They look inside and see four robbers enjoying their ill-gotten gains. Standing on each other's backs, they decide to scare the robbers away and making a terrible noise. The men run for their lives, not knowing what the strange sound is. The animals take possession of the house, eat a good meal and settle in for the evening. Later that night, the robbers return and sent one of their members in to investigate. He sees the cat's eyes shining in the darkness and the robber thinks he is seeing the coal of fire. He reaches over to light his candle and then things happen in quick succession. The cat scratches his face with her claws. The dog bites him on the leg. The donkey kicks him with his hooves and the rooster crows and chases him out of the door, screaming. He tells his companions that he was beset by a horrible witch who scratched him with his long fingernails, a monster with a knife, a giant who hit him with the club, and worst of all, a judge who screamed from the rooftop. The robbers abandon the cottage to the strange creatures who have taken it, where the animals live happily for the rest of their life. Now, what are the morals of this story? <coughs> Each of the animals in this story is forced to adapt to change and give up something he or she was good at and enjoyed doing. Yet, by leaving their comfort and seeking something new, they found something better, even if it wasn't what they expected. Another important moral in the story is that of teamwork. The animals in these stories are old and weak, and alone none of them would be able to achieve much. Yet, 
By working together, they are able to achieve something that none of them would be able to achieve alone. The fairy tale of the town musician of Bremen is an example that cooperation can lead to something unexpected. Cooperation is more than the sum of all parts, particularly when you are, as one of those parts, not big or influential enough to be seen or heard regionally, let alone globally. As a relatively small organization, the Royal Netherlands Navy seeks parts of its strength in cooperation. Let me take you through a brief history of my Navy. <coughs> the Royal Netherlands Navy dates back to 1488, when the Statute of the Admiralty in the Netherlands was issued by King Maximilian <coughs> Since then, the Netherlands Navy operated on all waters around the globe in numerous conflicts and wars. Nowadays, our national government focuses on three strategic security interests. Defense of the Netherlands and allied territory, the international rule of law, and the economic security. All three imply international cooperation, and indeed, the Netherlands Navy hardly operates anymore without being embedded in an alliance or without working closely with international organizations like the United Nations, the European Union, NATO and numerous other countries and non-governmental organizations. Being a small navy but with high ambitions, the Dutch Navy has been engaged in various operations all under the international flag. To enable these international operations and maintaining the required operational readiness, the Dutch <coughs> Navy seeks participation <coughs> in international exercises, operating effectively in a coalition or alliance can only be achieved by exercising with those partners. I think you're all familiar with the phrase, train as you fight and fight as you train. But the Netherlands is taking cooperation a step further and has even been looking to integrate parts of its navy with that of other countries. We think that integration will strengthen, guard and enhance effectiveness of military capabilities. On the other hand, integration will lead to a more efficient organization of capabilities and reduction of costs. For example, by combined procurement of military equipment, common maintenance, training and education, more widespread sharing of infrastructure and the creation of joint operational units. Given the enormous advantages, one might wonder why the whole world isn't cooperating. Of course, I'm aware it's not that easy. But allow me to share some criteria derived from experience depicting a balance between ambition and realism. First of all, and this sounds practically like my wedding vows, trust, confidence and solidarity, generally regarded as the most important success factor. The more partners trust each other, the easier cooperation will be. Confidence and solidarity are key when operating together. Fear of losing support of a partner, abandonment, or the perceived risk of being drawn by a partner into conflict, entrapment, can be a fail factor of operation and of cooperation. Secondly, sovereignty and autonomy. Maintaining national sovereignty is often mentioned as a crucial blocking factor for deeper defense cooperation. Principally, countries want to have autonomy in the maximum amount of capabilities in order not to be dependent on others. On the other hand, autonomy can be threatened by losing capabilities, for example, as a result of budget cuts. The number of partners. The general rule is that multinational defense cooperation will be more difficult when the number of participants goes up. The risk of diverging interests 
and national sensitivity increases. Therefore, deeper defense cooperation normally takes place in bilateral or small sub-regional formations. Countries and forces of similar size and quality. Cooperation between countries of different size can be hindered by the fear of domination by the smaller or by ignoring the needs of the other by the bigger partner. Equally, larger countries may judge the capabilities of smaller countries to be of lower quality. Nevertheless, there are examples of successful defense cooperation between bigger and smaller countries, such as between Germany and the Netherlands or the United Kingdom and the Netherlands. Mindset, defense culture and organization. National first thinking has to be replaced by multinational first thinking. This will take time as traditionally organizational structures and cultures in defense departments and military staffs have always been based on national priorities. Education, exchange of liaison officers, career planning by alternating between national and international positions will certainly help to reduce the problem. Countries may also be different in their ways of working, in organizational setup and in operating procedures. These factors can have a negative impact on cross-border defense cooperation, but they are not static. They can change and adapt over time, like it is the case with trust. Standardization and interoperability. The further concepts, doctrine and equipment are standardized, the easier and more far-reaching defense cooperation can be. In particular, operating the same equipment allows for integration, not only in the areas of training and education, but also with regard to logistics, maintenance and the acquisition of spare parts. Realism, clarity and seriousness of intentions. Although it might be regarded as an open door, realism is an important criterion for success. Too many projects have failed because they only served a political or symbolic purpose. Countries should have the same intentions, be open and clear about the goals of cooperating together and define realistic subjects. Now, how is all of this working for the Royal Netherlands Navy? A few examples. Integration is the key to the successful cooperation between the Belgian Navy and the Netherlands Navy. We share the same fleet headquarters and staff, led by me, the Admiral Benelux, and by my deputy, Admiral Benelux, which is the Belgian Navy commander. The operational headquarters, the fleet training command, schools, and the maritime battle staff are fully integrated, with Dutch and Belgian staff officers serving both the Netherlands and Belgian navies. Operating with the same class of frigates and mine hunters, the maintenance is shared and divided between Belgium and the Netherlands. Both nations maintain the sovereignty of their own assets. Coordination and aligning techniques, techniques and procedures are key in the equal successful cooperation with the Royal Navy and the Royal Marines. What started as a combined landing force in 1972 has resulted in extensive cooperation. With the arrival of our amphibious shipping, our cooperation now has the potential to be a high readiness force up to brigade level, together with specialist shipping and supporting maritime, land and air assets. Dutch ships undergo and support Flag Officer Sea Training in the UK for a final workup. And recently, the Netherlands Navy and the German Navy are trialling and exercising to share the use of the Netherlands Joint Support Ship and to integrate the German Sea Battalion into the Netherlands Marine Corps, thus creating a binational amphibious capability. Admiral Krause just highlighted this in his speech. Last but not least, 
international partners are sold in developing new ships, submarines, mine countermeasurement capabilities, as well as technical and social innovations. Ready for the future, but also affordable, creating best value for taxpayers' money while delivering state-of-the-art capabilities. In retrospect, I can conclude that with cooperation, effectiveness has been increased and savings have been made. And it has been possible to retain capabilities that otherwise might have been lost. Of course, I don't have one true recipe for international cooperation. But what worked for us are the following experiences. And I will limit myself to the top three. Overcome the differences in culture and language. Understand and respect each other's size, habits, culture, national problems and challenges. Common doctrine and procedures help. And take time to gain trust. Meet regularly and work not only on content, but also on relations, like here at the Gold Dialogue. Different national laws and rules of engagement affect training requirements, financial and replacement process, and real-world operation, and define a common goal. Ladies and gentlemen, let me conclude. International cooperation is a prerequisite for global success. Only through acting at an international level, higher degrees of effectiveness and solidarity can be achieved. Political ties can be strengthened and the protection of shared interests can become more effective. Ladies and gentlemen, in the end, we all have a mutual interest. Prosperity through stability and security. Thank you very much.